Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers, Green Acres Pest Control, and tonight I, uh, I want to talk about landlords and bed bugs. a very touchy subject for a lot of people. I actually filmed a video today <clears throat> that uh, be a little bit of a maybe a shorter version of what I'm talking about tonight um, on landlords and bed bugs that I hope to release either next week or the week after. On Tuesday, I've got a lot of editing to do, but um, I want to go over uh, why it's important that landlords take into account uh, bed bug control and taking care of bed bugs if their um, you know tenants get infested, their properties, and what they could actually run into if they don't. And so, um, I have a couple of slides, well, slides so to speak. I've got a couple of windows open over here on my other monitor that I'm actually going to share with you tonight. I want to show you some things and some reasons why I believe that landlords should uh, cover bed bugs for their tenants. Um, now, there are instances where people bring bed bugs into properties. Um, either way, the, the landlord is going to need to eliminate the bed bug problem because you can't re rent it if you decide to evict somebody because they bring bed bugs into your apartment. Uh, you can't rent the property until you take care of the bed bugs because you're going to get sued if you don't. So you have to get rid of the bed bug problem either way. Um, and so I want to show a couple things. I'm going to share my screen here for a minute. Um, if you'll notice here, this is one, one story about a family that was awarded $250,000 for a bed bug infestation in a city housing complex. Uh, this was uh, updated March 4th, 2019, so this was just last year that this occurred. Um, in my own state of Virginia, in Prince George County, a woman was awarded $100,000 for a bed bug case where the landlord wasn't properly taking care of the bed bug problem. Um, and in Southern California, a family was actually awarded $1.6 million in a bed bug lawsuit. This was uh, in 2018. So there are some serious repercussions um, that judges are awarding people for bed bug infestations in their properties where the property manager is not taking care of the bed bug problem. So in Virginia, it's actually uh, part of the law where um, unless you have an addendum written into your lease agreement, the landlord is actually subject to, uh, is actually required to by the state, if a property uh, ends up with a bed bug issue, the, um, the landowner has to pay, or the property owner has to pay for the bed bug treatment, has to eliminate the bed bug treatment, it's the law. They're not allowed to evict people over a bed bug infestation because the bed bugs are honestly not really their fault. Hey John. Um, and so what I'm trying to say is when it comes to, uh, so bed bugs are, are spread via person to person contact, um, or maybe you have a delivery, a home delivery from a furniture company. Um, and even, even if it's not used furniture, let's say it's brand new furniture. So one of the things that furniture companies are offering their customers is they will do this thing called white glove delivery. And so what that is, is so if you order a sofa or a bed, actually my wife got this um, service. What was it, the bed? A mattress, yeah. It was a mattress. Three different mattresses. Three different mattresses. So it was three different mattresses she'd, she's ordered via white glove delivery. And so what they do is they come in, and they deliver your mattress, they take your old mattress away, and they put it on the truck. And who knows how many houses they deliver mattresses to in that day, but a lot of times these trucks will actually get infested with bed bugs if the company is not treating the trucks for bed bugs. And so it's not necessarily your fault you get bed bugs. It's not like you went out and you bought used furniture, but uh, even if you do buy used furniture, you know, no one is gonna intentionally infest their home with bed bugs. No one intentionally infests their home with roaches. It's not the tenant's fault. It doesn't mean you're nasty. It doesn't mean you're dirty. It doesn't mean that you're somehow some kind of a filthy, nasty, lazy person because you have bed bugs. But that's in a lot of cases, that's actually what the landlords are pinning on their tenants. And so what the government has done is they've stepped in and said, ho, ho, wait a minute. Uh, we can prove that this is not true. 
we can prove that these bed bugs have come from other locations, that no one intentionally infests themselves with bed bugs. No one is out, I mean, unless they're me and, and they keep bed bugs in a little vial up here, like I've got right here on my desk, no one is that crazy except for me that actually has bed bugs in their house intentionally. No one wants them in their house. And so, but the only, honestly, the only reason I have them here is because I want to show them to you. And this, I'm kind of getting a little worried because they weren't up there where they were supposed to be. Uh, I wonder what happened to my bed bugs, Alicia. What? Exactly. They disappeared. Oh, well, anyway, probably nothing to worry about. Um, so anyway, uh, I made a video today and I'm, uh, I've, I've got a video on the back burner about spiders and how to eliminate spiders, but I, I just, I did a, I did want to, I went into a really horrible apartment today. It was a, uh, it was actually wasn't an apartment, it was a house. It was just a single family home and it's being rented, they're renting it out. And the guy that's renting the house has been living there for 25 years and the house is infested with bed bugs. It's the worst bed bug infestation I've ever seen in my life. The landlord is paying to kill the bed bugs. It's not like it's, you know, he's not doing it. But it, it just sparked this thought in my head that, you know, there are landlords out there that won't. There are people out there that have been evicted that don't understand what their rights are as tenants. And so that's why I decided, well, I'm going to go on. I'm going to talk about this tonight because it's something that's fresh in my mind. It just happened today. And so I thought I would talk a little bit about landlords and what landlords should actually do. Now, if you'll pay attention, and I'll show my screen one more time. Um, you're a landlord, okay? Can you afford a $1.6 million lawsuit? Um, can you afford a $250,000 lawsuit? Can you afford a $100,000 lawsuit? You know, can you afford to get sued and then your insurance has to pay for every single count? And in some instances, the, if, if the judge even proves that you were negligent, a lot of times your uh, insurance won't even pay and then you have to pay out of pocket. So keep that in mind if you're a landlord and you're considering trying to take advantage of your, uh, of your tenants that you could pay thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars and be in the hole forever trying to get rid of just one lawsuit. And not to mention your tarnished name and that nobody's going to want to stay in your apartments because of this horrible thing that happened to you um, because you didn't take care of your tenants. And the reason I say this is because when you rent your home to someone, um, you're, it's like, let's, let's say, and, and just so you know, if you hear a bunch of woo, woo, woo in the background, my wife is actually starting a fire in the fireplace. I would show you, and she did. It's a really nice, pretty fire over there. It's real beautiful. Um, she's, she's very talented in her fire starting skills. She's not going to burn the house down or nothing, but she did start a fire. It's a little chilly outside. So, um, so anyway, with, with landlords and tenants, if, if you've got someone living in your house, yeah, you're not living in a house. Yes, they're paying you rent. But would you have your home open to a house guest and let them go into a guest bedroom and let them sleep there and have bugs crawl all over them while they're sleeping there? Uh, would you allow them to go into the kitchen, uh, pop a hot dog in the microwave, and have cockroaches crawl all out and get all over their food in the microwave? Um, would you... Uh, you know, is this something that you would want to have happen in your home for your house guests? Most people would say no. In fact, I don't know of anybody that would say, if, if, oh, yeah, yeah, I want, I want to rent to somebody and have bugs crawl all over them. Unless you're, you know, the producer of Fear Factor, I don't think you're going to want people to do that. I don't think you're going to want to do that to your guests. And while they are paying rent, they're still living in your house. They're still guests in your home. And people are not animals and shouldn't be treated like animals. And I believe that if you've got people in your home, even though they're paying you rent, there are some things that you should really kind of provide for your tenants. Um, I have uh, very few landlords I work for, but the ones I do are usually pretty good people, and they usually do take care of their tenants, but the ones that don't, I don't work for them. They don't hire me because they're looking for the bottom line and the, and the lowest dollar amount possible, and they're, they're not, I'm not that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's not really about who they can and can't help and take care of or you know, that the fact that the people are paying thousands of dollars to live in their house, uh, you know, it's, it's, it has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with, well, how much money am I going to be able to keep in my pocket? Uh, well, I think from a, can I interject, from a financial standpoint too, roaches, rodents, 
Bed bugs all pose a serious financial risk to your investment. Right. And so, and, and this is one of the problems with bed bugs. And so, hey, Gary, uh, actually in Roanoke, so I did a job. It's one of the very first bed bug jobs I took my son Rory on. He's, he's uh, he'll be 16 next month. He's uh, sweet 16. He's, uh, he's been with me since he was eight years old, working with me in pest control. And he was eight when I took him on a, his first bed bug job, either eight or nine. And uh, uh, it's really kind of an eye-opening thing when you take a child into a bed bug job and they see just how bad and horrible they can be. And um, he went with me on that job. That house that he went with me on, the bed bugs were so bad, the city of Roanoke was actually going to condemn the house. They were going to uh, they were going to condemn it because they were worried. I mean, would you have bugs to the numbers that some people have in their home, whether it's cockroaches or bed bugs? Um, they they die, and when they die, their their bodies kind of pile up and they act like tender. And so what happens is, and this has happened in homes I've, I've treated before, uh, where I had one lady I treated in, in Bedford, Virginia one time, where her home actually burned down because of a cockroach infestation. The cockroaches actually got into a computer that she had, shorted out the motherboard, caused the fire, at least that's what the fire marshal had ruled, in this home because there were just so many dead roaches piled up inside this woman's computer. Once one sparked, the whole thing went up, caught the house on fire, burned the house down. So the same thing can happen with bed bugs because they like to go into the walls and they like to hide in around electrical sockets and stuff like that. And all it takes is one spark and these dead bugs are just light right up like a match. And so um, it is a very important thing that if you, if you are considering renting your home that you do take into account that bed bugs and cockroaches and things like that are something you should probably uh, pay for to get rid of. Um, in fact, in, in Virginia, it's against the law to uh, to even do your own pest control unless you're licensed. If you if you do uh, as far as renting, so if you rent a property and and you have renters in your property and you're not licensed as a technician, you're not allowed to even provide pest control for that person at all. You have to pay for someone to come in and do it, uh, or the the renter themselves has to do it on their own. Uh, Decent Wood says thanks for the information and help last week. I submitted a bid for three hundred thousand. I doubt I'll get it, but that's the price I'll be happy with. <laughs> all right, good job, Woods. Um, yeah, so if you guys watched last week, uh, Decent Woods is another pest control technician. He was trying to get a bid, and I kind of talked to him a little bit. Uh, but tonight, we're going to try, to try to try to keep the subject on bed bugs. I'm going to try to talk about bed bugs tonight. I, uh, I did a bed bug job. So, so what happened? I went into the house. I was going to treat the house for bed bugs today. And when I walked into the kitchen, the bed bugs were crawling all over the floor. Uh, they were all over the walls. They were up around the tops of the crown in the house. They were in every door frame, all around the doors. Uh, I actually checked, it's, it's been a while since I've had to do this, but when I walked out of the house, I actually checked my boots to make sure that I didn't come out of the house with bed bugs hiding inside the grooves of my boots. But I went in to do an inspection today. I was actually planning on treating the house today, but the guy's uh, wife, she was, uh, she was sick, and so she, she didn't want me doing anything today. So they're going to plan on having her, and everybody is going to be out of the house Sunday. I'm going to go out Sunday afternoon and treat the house for them. But uh, it, was, it was probably one of the heavier infested houses I've ever been in in my life, if not the most infested house I've ever been in. Um, they've got it kind of piled up. They've been living in the house for 25 years. It's kind of piled up. I think they've probably had the bed bugs for at least three or four years. It's, uh, it's, it's, really, it's really insane how bad they are. <laughs> but I'll let you know how it goes Sunday. Maybe I'll do a surprise live stream Sunday after I do the show, after I do the job, let you know how things went. But it was... Uh, it's it's it is a really horrible bed bug infested house, um, to the point where I'm actually concerned when I get in there and start treating Sunday that I might actually bring some home with me. In fact, I might take one of my vials and bring some live ones home, and show you guys how they uh, how they eat. I really thought they were in this one, and they are not in here. That really bothers me that I don't know where my bed bugs are because I've got bed bugs in a jar. So I've got I've got these little vials that I have, and they've got a hole in the top with a screen. I don't know if, it, if, it'll, actually, if it'll actually zoom in on that or not. The camera's supposed to have autofocus. But, um, so it's got two different size screens. It's got one uh, that's got really super tiny holes that allows for nymphs to feed through, and it's got one with larger holes that allows for adults to feed through. And so you can actually use it to uh, feed bed bugs, but not release bed bugs in your home if you decide, and I thought I would show you exactly how uh, bed bugs feed, exactly how they, um, how they survive, and I was actually thinking of letting them 
like right right in a spot like right here so you could easily visibly see the reaction that a person will get because I have pretty horrible reactions from bug bites, uh, fleas, uh, mosquitoes, all kinds of bugs, uh, ticks especially. If I get bit, I swell up really bad and I thought I would just document some cases of bed bug bites just to give you an idea of how long it takes me to heal and how long it takes a you know pest control technician who's never been bit by bed bugs because I've never had one before bite me, uh, just what it looks like. And <laughs> That's because I'm crazy, you know. For for science, for science, and for you, my audience, just just to show you what it looks like, and uh, you know, because I like my job. I'm a very unique person, and that I love my job. Mondays, I look forward to Mondays. I actually think Mondays are fantastic because I get to go to work, kill bugs for people. So, I really want to know where that vial went. Though this is uh, this is the first time I've noticed that it was missing. So I don't know what has happened to it. If my two-year-old has come up here and run off with it, because it had bed bugs in it. Um, oh, there they are. I found them. I found them. You cannot worry anymore. Yeah. Let's see if I can show them to you. Yeah, they're in there. So, bed bugs. If there's any questions. Don't hesitate to ask if you're curious about bed bugs or if you're curious about landowners or uh, property management and how to deal with it. Um, I'd like to talk about that tonight. That's one of the things I'm actually, I made a video. It's a pretty good long video though and it's, it's really so, the video I made for Tuesday's release is going to be, it's about uh, um, property managers landlords, mainly property investors, people that buy homes and rent homes. Uh, it's, it's advice on what they should do if they're planning on renting to people, um, the precaution they need to take if they are going to rent to people, and also renters that are planning on renting. Uh, what to do when you go into a property uh, and you don't know they have bed bugs and all of a sudden you find bed bugs, what to do and how to combat the issue. One of the problems with a uh, bed bug addendum, so to speak. So if you're if you're renting a property, then typically you have your renters in the, today's day and age, you have renters um, sign a bed bug addendum. And so what that is, is it's an actual addition to your normal lease that states that you understand the dangers that bed bugs pose and if you bring bed bugs into an apartment or a house that you're living living in that you're renting from someone that you are responsible for the elimination of the bed bug infestation and when you sign that addendum you basically give away your renters rights you're you're forfeiting your right to uh, to bed bugs uh, to bed bug treatment by a landlord um, and so, and yes, uh, Ray, I actually do treat my boots with off to try to keep bugs that bite like fleas and ticks and bed bugs and stuff like that off of my clothing. So I do use that. Ray J asked if I ever sprayed my boots down. Um, and let me see if I can actually, I might be able to pull up my, uh, my chatter box. Let's see, is that that? Yeah, you go. <coughs> Excuse me. So anyway, um, now I can't remember. What was I talking about? I can't remember. You weren't oh, the listening. bed bug addendum. Oh yeah, the bed bug addendum. So, so what happens is if you sign this addendum, um, that's not the end all. You know, the thing is, the law, it, depending on what state you live in, a lot of times the law is actually in your favor, even if you sign a bed bug addendum, because bed bugs typically take six to ten days to hatch out of their egg, and this is known. This is scientific fact proven. Six to ten days. So, thank you, Ray. So, um, if the bed bugs are hatching in uh, six to ten days, a lot of times the addendum only lasts for 72 hours, which is not six days. And so, if you have a bed bug problem, let's say you're a renter and you move into an apartment and you're there for um, two weeks and you start getting bit by bed bugs. You didn't have bed bugs at your apartment you lived in before. Maybe you lived, moved out of your parents' house. You never had bed bugs before. You don't even know what they are. So you look them up on Google and you find out that it's bed bugs that's biting you. And so you go to your landlord and your landlord says something like, well, uh, they weren't there before you moved in. You must have brought them in. 
And so then you've got, you've been there for two weeks and you notice that you've got bed bugs everywhere. And so uh, what do you do? What do you do? What do you, do you just allow to, do, are you forced to pay? Because a lot of the addendums say you're required to pay. And if you don't, they'll evict you. They'll kick you out if you don't kill the bed bugs because they can't have bed bugs spreading into other units of the apartment building that you live in. So what do you do? Um, do you really, do you really have to pay for a bed bug elimination? Are you really required to? And this is where I usually advise people to go and actually talk to a lawyer because a lot of times if you talk to a lawyer and you have evidence that say that, uh, hey, I done missed 22 minutes. I didn't tell my landlord about my daughter's bed bugs and her stuffed animals, Cook says. Uh, but if, yeah, you could go back and watch too. So, so um, I'll break away from what I was saying real quick. Cook just said that they missed the first 22 minutes of the show. So if you ever miss the show and you're watching, I, I upload all of my live streams, go up later. Um, in fact, they immediately start uh, processing as soon as I end my live stream. And usually within a few hours, maybe even minutes, they're up on YouTube so you can rewatch them. If you ever want to go back and watch one of these at a later date, I keep all my live streams on YouTube. They're always uploaded. Um, so just for future reference. But so anyway, um, if you go to a lawyer and you talk to a lawyer and you've got this type of evidence where it's six to 10 days for a bed bug to hatch and the bed bug doesn't even bite you right away, it bites you within six to 10 days of hatching. So that's almost three full weeks before you even get your first bite. If you're getting bit in a two week time frame, typically that's a sign that the bed bugs may have already been there, they may have been hidden in the wall, and if you didn't bring the bed bugs in, then that's where they probably were. Or they may even be in a neighboring unit that's right next to yours, and it's actually not your fault at all that you have the bed bugs. And if you go and talk to a lawyer, sometimes even public attorneys will take the the uh, the case because it's typically a win case. Because, like I said, let me show you again for those that didn't catch this earlier. These are, these are actual real cases that, that are true, that really happened, um, where there were families that, like I said, this family was awarded $250,000 for a bed bug infestation in a city housing complex. This was in March of 2019. This was a family that was awarded $100,000 in a bed bug case. I'm not sure exactly, that was uh, 2015. We've got a case of $1.6 million awarded in 2018, just two years ago. 2018, $1.6 million. It's not worth it for a landlord to bicker and argue and try to treat you like a dog. You know, the thing is, is you're not an animal and you need to be treated with fairness and you're living in their property and you're giving them your rent money and what are you really getting for your money except a bed to lay in at night? You know, is that really all you're getting for your renter's money? Well, that's not what the government says. And so that's where you can actually come in and use this to your advantage and actually get rid of these bed bugs because no one wants bed bugs. One of the problems, if you end up having to move out of a property that has bed bugs and you didn't know, let's say you move into a place two weeks from now, let's, let's continue the scenario. So two weeks from now, you realize that the apartment has bed bugs. You didn't bring them in, you have them now. What do you do? Do you just up and pack all your stuff and move again? Well, if you do, you're gonna take the bed bugs with you so what do you do? What exactly? So John says bed bugs lay five to eight eggs a day. That's absolutely true. That's a lot of eggs. In fact, a female can lay up to 500 eggs in her lifetime. For every day you stay in that property, five to eight eggs could potentially be being laid on your bed, in your box spring, on your belongings. Is, is it or should you just throw away all your furniture? Should you just go and just chuck it all in the dumpster just because you made a mistake and moved in the wrong apartment for two weeks? It's not your fault. And so that's where you have the ability to fight for your rights to, um, it is your right, it's your renter's right. And the, just because they get you to sign a paper, people can get you to sign all kinds of papers. You could sign all kinds of papers, but if a judge looks at that paper and says, this is not legal, this is against the law. The law says that you're required to do this. You cannot have them sign this paper. This is not legal. Then you can take them to court and you can win. So if you're in front of a judge and the judge says, no, this is not valid. This is not true. This needs to be taken care of. And this is where 
it's very important for Okay, so th this is what I advise. So, so you're a landlord, and you hear me talk about this. You hear me, I'm bashing you so hard right now because you really need to take care of your tenants. But one thing that you can do as a landlord to protect your investment is if you have preventative pest control. So let's say you have a pest control technician coming out to your house once a month, and they're treating your house once a month. And a tenant moves in, and they bring bed bugs into your apartment because that happens all the time. If a person moves into your apartment and brings bed bugs on their things, infest your uh, apartment with bed bugs, then what do you do? What do you do as a landlord? Now you're over a barrel because now you've got a renter in your apartment. The government says you have to kill bed bugs. What you should you have done to prevent this whole case in the first place? So you go to court. And you show the, the judge, no, look, I pay for pest control. I have preventative pest control. This is what they offer me as a prevention method to keep bed bugs out of my units. I pay for this service every single month or however much, a year or whatever. Some, some contracts go from year to year. Some go from month to month. Some go from quarter to quarter based on how often you have the guy coming out to the house. And you can show the judge and you can say, no, this is what I've done. This tenant brought bed bugs in because that does happen. Sometimes it isn't the landlord's fault either that the tenant actually had bed bugs. They may have been evicted from a property because they had bed bugs. They bring their bed bugs into the new property they're moving into, and it's not that landlord's, um, it's not his 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 place to kill the bed bugs because they weren't they were brought in by the tenant. So then, what can you do as a landlord? Except if you had had preventative bed bugs in the bed bug service in the first place. What that's going to do is when a tenant moves in to a property and they've brought bed bugs into your property, then the bed bugs can't really live in the property because if they try to establish there and get into a baseboard or get behind the wall void or something, well, there's a chemical residue there that's going to kill those bed bugs. It's going to eliminate those bed bugs so they don't infest your, your investment. All right, They can live on the people's stuff which they were living on the people's stuff when they moved in, but they can't live in the apartment and they can't live in your house because if they try to get out and live in your house, they die. And so that's going to, that's just ultimately all around, that's the best decision you can make as a landlord. And you can factor this all into your rent. And yeah, you might be a little more expensive than other landlords, but you can tell your customer, you could tell your client, you could tell your tenant, whatever, say, yeah, but this is what I offer you. This is what I give you. You're not going to have spiders. You're not going to have crickets. You're not going to have bugs. You're not going to have ants crawling all over your apartment because I pay for pest control. They come and they take care of pest control, and you don't have bugs. And a lot of people don't like, I don't know anybody. I don't know anyone who likes to live with bugs. I don't know anyone. Not one person says, oh, bugs? Yeah, sure, let me lay in bed with them. No one. There's no one that likes that, except maybe me, because I have a vial of bed bugs that I keep on my desk. But other than me, but I'm, I'm a little crazy because here I am on YouTube talking about bugs all the time. I'm a little crazy, but most people aren't crazy like me. <laughs> so Cook With Me said a little while ago, I'm just now getting to it, uh, Ugh, my laptop is about to restart. I don't know how, the, how long that's going to take. I have preventative pest control. We haven't had someone come out since March. Yeah, but you, you really should. See, that's another thing with preventative pest control. You should get on the people, you know, if the landlord has you sign a lease, like, so, so I, I actually used to manage a property for my father, and in his lease, it says that you agree to monthly pest control, and that the monthly pest control, the technician's going to come into the house, and they're going to treat the house for monthly pest control. It's to keep roaches out of the house. Uh, the number one cause of COPD and asthma in low-income housing is our cockroaches, and so it helps health-wise. It helps keep roaches out of your apartment out of your property and so it's just something that he has written in his addendum and so I used to manage that property for him and when um, people would come in you would treat the apartment and the apartments wouldn't get roaches they wouldn't have them they wouldn't have ants they wouldn't have spiders they wouldn't have any bugs at all the bugs would die but I was pretty you know I was pretty religious about treating it once a month I mean it was my responsibility to treat it I've been licensed since I was 17 so I can treat it and so I would treat the apartment every single month once a month like clockwork on the set I think it was like the first Monday of the month and when I would treat their apartment, I would go and I would treat my house and stuff too. And that way I would remember to do my house on a regular basis. Because if I didn't, I had ants all over the place. So, 
But um, with regular pest control, you just don't have bugs. And it's not necessarily something you would need to do, you know, inside all the time. If you've got bed bugs, then yes. If it's a prevention for bed bugs, yes, you do absolutely need to do the inside. But if it's just for ants or crickets or spiders or something like that, usually just outside exterior treatment, a good, a good exterior pest control treatment can take care of all those bugs. And then you, have, you don't have to, you know, some people are kind of sensitive and they don't like you spraying stuff in their house every, every month. And if that's the case, then you can always treat around the outside and it will knock those uh, bugs down and keep them out from getting out in, in the house. Because the last thing you want is your child to, you know, wake up in the morning with a spider bite or something like that. It's better just to go ahead and, and eliminate them at the source, which is outside. If they're a landlord, they should absolutely be doing a bed bug inspection between tenants. Right. I agree with that. Yeah. So she's, she, I don't know if you guys can hear Alicia. My wife, she sits up right here and she'll usually talk every now and then during the show. But, um, she mentioned that if you are a landlord, you should at least have a bed bug in inspection between tenants. And I would actually recommend even maybe a, a, a bed bug dog come in and smell and see if there's actually a bed bug problem. Because if there is, you need to eliminate that problem before you rent to someone new. And sometimes that requires having a dummy sleep in there. Or not a dummy, but a, what do you call them? A, a, um, a guinea pig? Yeah. <laughs> a person that, that's willing to get bit so that the bed bugs will come out and die. Um, but that's one thing you do need to do if you're, uh, if you're renting your property too. So, so how is everybody doing? Everybody ready for the new year? I guess I should be talking about Christmas. Today was the last day of Hanukkah. And so those that celebrate Hanukkah, happy Hanukkah. Uh, and now we're getting right into Christmas and next week, just a few days. Guess what? My birthday is Saturday. So I'll be, uh, old Saturday. That's what I keep telling my son. I said, yeah, Saturday comes, I'm going to be old. And, oh, you're not old. I'm like, oh, yes, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, my birthday is December 19th. So I'll be 39. I'm a year away from 40. I, I told my wife, I said, this is uh, my birthday, and uh, it's my last year in my 30s. I'm about to cross the void into 40. I already got lots of silvery hair up there. And so... I know, we took a picture of you the other day, and you're like... I know, I was playing with the kids in the floor, and my wife took a picture and uh, of me playing with the kids, and I was looking back at it, and I was like, my hair is so gray. Like, see, you guys don't see it, because I always wear a hat, but I have got such gray hair, I can't believe, but it's because I started having babies. You start having babies, and you get gray hair. <laughs> they, they will turn your hair gray in a heartbeat. Um... So Cook says they don't, there's my apartment com complex, my office manager sits around on the phone, my porch light's been out for two weeks, still nothing. Uh, David says, Hi, happy birthday. Um, when treating with Crossfire, how often do you shake the tank to keep it mixed? About every two or three minutes. I, I do it meticulously. So I developed the habit of shaking my tank when I was like 18 or 19 years old. Because I started, and thank you everybody for saying happy birthday. Uh, it's not my birthday yet. Don't, don't make me older than I am. I got two more days. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, I, I, took, I made it a habit to shake my tank um, every two or three minutes. Because I used to use a lot of wettable powders like uh, Demon WP and other type of wettable powders. And so if you don't constantly agitate the tank, the 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 dust actually settles the powder will settle to the bottom and it'll separate out of the water and it clogs the screens real bad so you should always constantly shake your tanks and shake them up move them around and so i just always do it i don't even think about it anymore because i've just developed a habit of shaking the tank all the time and in fact when i'm waiting for a customer to come to the front door i'll do like this and i'll push the tank up in the air and and just always constantly shaking the tank constantly so I always shake it. I don't ever have a problem with crossfire separating from the water, but it will do that. And so you do need to agitate pretty frequently. If you're not used to treating all the time like I am, then you do need to constantly agitate your tank every every couple minutes. Um, you don't just sit it in the floor and just leave it sitting there. You, you pick it up and you move it around, you shake it up and, and keep moving it. Uh, Cook says, and then when I had a leak, I had to call the head office to speak with the landlord and in two days it was fixed after asking the office manager for two months. 
Uh, yeah, office managers, uh, property managers are usually way worse than contacting the landlord directly. Usually you can get a lot more done if you contact the landlord directly, if that's even possible. A lot of times with property managers, it's not possible. But if it is, it, I find that it does work better if you contact a property manager. Uh, Decent Wood said, I require all clients to place all items two feet off of the walls when treating, and it's been great. That is, that's really helpful. I, I ask people to do it. I've, um... Yeah, you can't always get, you know, compliance out of customers when it comes to moving things away from the wall and stuff, especially with big furniture and things. And that's, uh, you know, I usually don't make them do that. I can usually treat behind entertainment centers with a wand of a B&G anyway. It's usually not that hard. But I do like it when they move stuff away. The last bed bug job, well, not, not the last one, but it's been maybe three or four jobs ago. I actually, the lady pulled everything away from the wall. I mean, everything. It was, it was actually really nice to be able to go in and get to everything that needed to be gotten to and uh you're in and out too it, it it saves your time i know it's a lot of work on the on the customer and i try not to put them through it if i don't have to but um that's one of the reasons too i like to use crossfire because it's a non-repellent but i, I want to mention today i haven't called her yet but the lady out of virginia tech denny miller uh, actually has claimed that Crossfire is having issues in the second generation, uh, having some immunity issues. And so I haven't seen that in my own work when I work out in the field. I haven't had problems with Crossfire and immunity at all. Not at all. But she also said that Crossfire was a um, highly toxic chemical, which it's actually classified as a four uh, on the... Um, on the toxicity level, which is if you if you have your you you have ratings that the EPA does, so you've got one, two, three, and four. One being the most toxic, and four being practically not non toxic, and that's where the rank that Crossfire falls under is between a three and a half to a four. So it's basically non toxic, and so I don't necessarily know if she she might have been confused and thinking about the wrong chemical, but um, or maybe maybe temperate or something like that that's a little more toxic to mammals. But anyway, I thought I'd mention that on my channel tonight. I, it's something that I've actually need to call and talk to her about at Virginia Tech because she studies. She does a lot of study with bed bugs and cockroaches. So keep that in mind for you, those techs out there that are having some issues with Crossfire. Um, Cook says I have to tell my son almost every day to move the sofa off the wall. He gets on my nerves with that every time he sits down and moves it. You know, I'll tell you what. I have one of those sofas, so it's sitting actually right there. I have it about, eh, for about eight inches off the wall right now because it's it's one of those mechanical ones that you can push and you break your back if you ever have to move one. But you push the button and it'll lay back because I've got horrible lumbar. And uh, that thing... If it gets pushed too back, too far back, and you go to lean it back, it'll rub marks on the wall. It, it'll leave marks all over the wall. So, um, but Ray J, the thing is, Ray J, in my personal experience, I've been using Crossfire for four years, and I have yet to, to, to run into immunity issues at all. I haven't seen any problems with bed bugs becoming immune to the chemical. It's a, uh, that's why I said I need to call and talk to her to make sure, because this is just hearsay. I just got this from another, another lady that I talked to, and she's telling me that um, she told her that. And so I, just, I actually just talked to Denny Miller uh, about a week ago uh, when I got my license renewed about uh, cockroaches. I wasn't really talking to her about bed bugs. We were talking about roaches. But, um, but yeah, so I need to call and talk to her myself because I can, I can actually call her. I've got her number. I can call uh uh, Virginia Tech and talk to her myself, but I need to do that probably probably after the holidays. I'll probably wait till after the first of the year to call and ask her. That way, I know that I'll be able to get a hold of them. They got weird hours up there. You know, colleges. You know, a lot of times they're off for they got weird breaks where they get off for the summer and they get off for the winter and they all kinds of different different breaks than what normal like school age children. So, and their their work schedules are odd, but. So I hope everybody's ready for Christmas. It's just a few days away. I think it's Thursday. Isn't it a week from today? Yeah, I think it is. I think is. Christmas is yeah. a week from today. Um, I think it is. Let me look. The 25th is Friday, so Christmas Eve. People will be watching, the, using those apps and trying to follow Santa Claus. So, 
watching the news and they'll be tracking him across the sky. I don't know if you guys, I never did watch those as a kid. I don't know if you guys ever watched those or not where the news will go and they'll track Santa Claus like the weatherman and stuff will put him up on the map of where he's been flying. I've always heard of it, but I never watched it myself. What product do you recommend for crickets? So I actually have a video I did on crickets. Let me give you the link. Um, I did one just a few months ago. Uh, and if you want to go to that, I would, I would recommend you go and watch that video because it's, it's not just about the, the chemicals I use, but it's also uh, how to do it effectively and how it actually works. Um, let me see. Bed bugs, fleas, centipedes, millipedes. There, it's uh, actually a general pest control video. And so it's a little bit uh, obscure on what it's actually about. So let me go there and copy the link and I'll paste it here. So that's my video I did on general pest control. This video, and I'll read the description to you. Have you ever wondered how pest control professionals perform their job? Have you ever wanted to do your own pest control like the pros do? This video, spiders, cockroaches, ants, crickets, and more, pest control anyone can do in three easy steps will teach you how to eliminate all of your general pests in three easy steps guaranteed. So that is a very broad video because I have a lot of people ask me questions like you just did on uh, John on how to get rid of uh, crickets, but also I have questions on ants, cockroaches, and spiders and stuff like that. And so this is more of a general pest control to kind of cover all the different bugs that you can eliminate. And so I recommend going there. Uh, Alpine WSG is what I usually recommend for indoors uh, for general pest control and outdoors uh, Demon Max. That's what I use uh, because Demon is just a really good chemical and it does keep crickets away. And so I recommend using that outside and of course granules and stuff around the outside like biofin granules or something similar around the outside of the house. That's what I do. Crickets come in from outside and if you understand they're a, you can actually um, if you're treating for crickets, you can cut them off at the pass, so to speak, if you understand their, the, the time of the year they're going to come in. They're a seasonal pest. Usually they come in in the heat of the summer when it's really, really hot and it's, we've gone through a period of drought, maybe two or three weeks without much rain. Um, they'll come into the house and in the winter when it gets really cold, typically right before the winter as the seasons first start to change, usually between, well in Virginia, between August and October, that's the time you want to try to spray the house. You want to treat because you want to prevent the crickets. You don't want to call it, you don't want them to make it into the house. You want them to die before they come in. So if you do a preventative, usually around September, October, that's going to hit it right on that mark where the crickets are usually trying to get in the house. And also in the spring, between March and May, uh, based on the temperature, always just pay attention to the temperature. When they start to get up above 50, around that, between 50 and 70 degrees, right around that, that's about the sweet spot you'll find that crickets will start coming into the house. And so that's usually when I recommend treating for crickets. Um, Cook says, do you have a link for spiders? Uh, that's the vi I've got a video. I have one. It's, it's, on my, it's on my computer. I just haven't edited it and put it up. I, that's one. I've got one I just recorded today about landlords and bed bugs. And I'll actually probably put the spider one up first because I just talked about landlords. And so this is going to go up tonight. So people can go and watch this if they're interested about landlords and property managers and bed bugs. And then in about a week and a half, two weeks, I'll put up my, my other one on that that I actually recorded today. Uh, it's a shorter, more uh, you know, easy to understand. It's about 20 minutes long, but um, it goes over uh, how landlords should actually budget for bed bugs, how tenants need to behave if they find bed bugs in a property and what to do. And, and how to try to uh, eliminate bed bugs completely from the whole scenario altogether so no one actually has bed bugs. So, um, does, do those electronic, no, the electronic monitors do not work. <laughs> I actually got asked the same question uh, last week and those things are croc, they don't work. Uh, Trezin HD says, so this Crossfire stuff works. I don't want to waste my money on Walmart stuff. I use rubbing alcohol to kill the ones I've seen but I know that won't kill the eggs or the ones I don't see. Actually, alcohol will kill the eggs. If you get alcohol on the eggs, they will die. I don't have enough money to hire someone to do it. Um, so yeah, Crossfire works. I recommend Crossfire. 
I go through my videos and watch my videos. I've got so many videos on how to use it properly. In fact, let me let me link one to you. I'll go I'll go I'll go get it. I'll do the I'll do the hard stuff. So um, let's see how to get rid of springtails, cockroaches, bed bugs. There we go. So if I go there. And I'll post this. This is for you, Triz and HD. That's a video on how to get rid of bed bugs. So, four easy steps. Really easy. But 91% alcohol will kill bed bug eggs. If they come into contact with it, it will kill them. Um, if you can find the eggs. The problem is finding the eggs. A lot of times they hide their eggs in the wall and in places that you can't actually see them and get to them. If you can't get to them, then you can't kill them. So, that's where crossfire comes in because the eggs have to hatch. And when the bed bugs come out to bite you, they die in the residual pesticide that's created by spraying with crossfire. So, um, so Decent Wood says, my son said he saw a mouse and there's no holes, no droppings, but I did find the dead spider beetles in the basement, so I sent a bunch of live traps. Um, actually, mice, um, this is the time of year for mice. Where do you live, Decent Woods? Because we, I've been having mice like crazy. I just did a mouse job tonight, so... I wonder if I can get that picture. Let me see if I can get that picture. Um, face, it's on Facebook, actually. Um, let me... I don't know if anybody's on Facebook or not. But I actually posted this on my personal Facebook page. So let me show you my personal page. I don't show people my personal page too much. But let me show you my personal page. So this is my Facebook page. There I am, right there, Jason Akers. There's my daughter, Emma. You probably have seen her in a video or two. She's been in a couple of them where she's looking for bed bugs. She's seven now, almost eight. But, uh, so if you scroll down here, this is a picture I took tonight. So this is a bathroom vent that, uh, well, That's a bathroom vent that, um, let me see if I can make it bigger for you. There we go. In the ceiling right above a, right above a commode. And I don't know if you can see that or not. That right there. So she called me on the phone, scared, um, that she had a mouse above her toilet in the ventilation for her bathroom. And I've never heard of this before. I've never had this happen before. This is the first time for everything, I guess. But, so I went out. And, uh, sure enough, there was a mouse. What it had happened is this, the vent above this is like a flex duct. It goes way up into the attic. He had gotten in up near the top of the flex duct and fell down inside there. And his tail had actually gotten stuck right there. Right there. He's stuck in there. So if you turn this, now this thing will turn, and then it will get tightened and loosened and tightened and loosened, but it doesn't actually come off. So you actually have to pull it from around this rim here, and the whole piece actually pops out. So I popped the whole piece out to get rid of the mouse, to catch the mouse and get rid of it. But he was stuck good. He wasn't going anywhere. He couldn't get out because his tail, he had gotten his tail wedged inside that vent and he was not going anywhere. So I was able to actually pull that down off the ceiling and get rid of him. So yes, that happened just a few hours ago. And so <laughs> you got all kind of crazy stories in pest control. That's probably one of the, I mean, I've picked up live mice before. But I, I never had had one in the ceiling of a lady's house before where I actually had to grab it out of the ceiling. So, yeah, that, that happened to me tonight. So. I mean, the thing is, every time she turned that fan on, the, the, the mouse would start moving. And he would try, because, you know, it's blowing air over him. And he would try to get out, because they don't like all that air blowing over him all the time. And so he would try to get out of there, and his tail would start moving, and she would freak out. 
And so she shut the bathroom door and called me, and I, I was over there. It only took me like 20 minutes to get to her house. I, I went right away. I, I'm like, this is an emergency. I'm going to go right now. I still had my uniform on from when I had just got home, so I just jumped in the car and ran right out to her house right away. But, um, yeah, I, I like those kind of jobs because, I mean, I got rid of the mouse. I took care of it, and I put out some bait stations and stuff. She did have signs of mice in the attic, so I went ahead and put out some bait stations, and I'll go back next month and check on those. But, uh, absolutely, it was... Definitely a, a an, an experience for sure. Get your heart pumping because when you start taking one of those things off of the ceiling, the mouse could jump out at any time, and you know the thing is probably going to do it and because he's scared. I mean, he's just a scared little mouse. He don't know any better. And so uh, I held the garbage bag up um, like above my head and just flipped that thing down inside the garbage bag. But, yeah, so. This job, for those that know... Pest control has uh, some of the craziest stories ever come out of pest control. It's a wonderful job for those that like stories. But <laughs> so, Cook says, oh my god, two mice came in my apartment last week. One was on the trap, beating up against the wall, woke me up out of my sleep, freaked me out. I live in Georgia. And the next morning, my son said one ran across the hallway into my daughter's room. You get some mouse bait out there and kill them mice. Uh, John Torres said, I had a customer that had a rat come up the toilet. Oh, I had that happen. I had that happen. Now, that, that was a crazy thing that happened to me. So I was in Roanoke. I was actually servicing Roanoke that day. A call came in out of Vinton, which is like five minutes out of the city of Roanoke. It's like right, it's Vinton. It, you got Bedford, Vinton, Roanoke. And so everything's like kind of crammed right there. In a, in a big mess. And so I was actually in Roanoke. A call came in. The lady was sitting on the toilet and she heard a splashing in the toilet and she jumped up from the toilet and looked back and there was a rat in the toilet. There wasn't just one rat, there were two rats. And they jumped out of the toilet in the bathroom. She freaked out, pants around her ankles, ran out of the bathroom, slammed the door and shoved a bunch of towels underneath the door and then called me. And I went out to her house and the rats were still in the bathroom because they couldn't. What they had done is they had gotten in the sewer pipe, and they had uh, what I had. What I assume. I mean, I didn't prove this or not because I just caught, killed the rats and got rid of them. But um, what I assume is that there was. A, it was a female. One was a female, and one was a male. And I assume the female was in heat, and the male was chasing the female. And so they ran, and they were willing to go up through that pipe, even though it was a water trap. They shouldn't have come through it. But because the female was in heat and she was trying to get away from the male, he chased her. And so they both came up the toilet at the same time. And so the way I caught them, I actually had some glue boards in my truck. And I laid the glue boards out and I scared them to where they would run out onto the glue boards and I caught them. And then I took them out and I disposed of them. But that was, that was pretty, that'll get your heart racing. You know, doing stuff like that where you're dealing with a wild animal. The thing is, you don't ever want to get bit by a wild animal. You should always wear the proper safety equipment. You should wear leather gloves if you can uh, because you want something they can't bite through. But you don't always have that. You know, if you're doing regular standard pest control, you really should have a pair of leather gloves. That day, I didn't have a set. So all I had were my regular rubber gloves. And here I am in here, knowing full well if this rat were to bite me, it's going to bite right through these rubber gloves. And so that was that was definitely a heart a heartbeating moment. But the thing is, if you use a... Uh, if you use a, a leather glove, then it, it makes things real awkward. So, so I was using leather gloves tonight in that ceiling, and I couldn't get the, uh, the thing to pop loose because you can't get your fingers underneath when you're wearing those leather gloves. You can't get your fingers underneath that piece of plastic to pull that device out of the ceiling. So it was really awkward. So I made the decision to take a leather glove off so I could actually get my fingers in. And of course, I'm like freaking out because at any point this mouse could jump up and bite me on the finger because they're scared and it just, it's cornered. And so it doesn't have anywhere to go. And whenever you corner an animal, that's when they're going to bite you. That's when you're most likely going to get bit. This is something they teach you in trapping. You should never cause an animal to feel like it's cornered so you can lessen the likeliness of you actually getting bit by the animal. Or you keep it on like one of those eight feet poles, you know, way on out there so you can't get bit that way too. So, so uh, does anybody, if anybody has any questions, I'd like, uh, I'd like to go ahead and ask them because um, 
I've been on for almost an hour now. I'm actually getting ready to head on uh, off of here. It's kind of late tonight. I got a late start to the show because I had to put my kids to bed, and that takes a little while sometimes, and I get started later than I'd like to. Um, there's a, see, there's another question. Faye asked, do those plug... I'm going to do a video. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a video on those electronic plug-in devices. And I'm going to, I really do need to put it together. The problem is, is I need to, I need to do a lot of research because I actually have read, now this was years ago, but I actually read the class action lawsuit against the companies that made those plug-in devices, those sonic plug-in devices that are supposed to keep bugs and mice and stuff away. And they don't work. In fact, the reason the lawsuit was filed is because, so I say this all the time, but roaches are the leading cause of COPD in low-income housing and asthma. They're the number one. Roaches, number one. So what these plug-in devices do and what these salesmen do is they pitch that you no longer need pest control and that you can get rid of your roaches by plugging these things in the wall and you no longer need pest control, even though roaches cause serious health problems with people, they're still convincing people that they do not need pest control. But you do need pest control. If you have roaches and mice in your house, you need to kill the roaches and the mice in your house. But the problem is, is they're trying to sell you these devices so that you don't have to buy pest control. Because like Jordan just said, he bought one for his mom. It was only $25, okay? You're going to spend more than $25 on a pest control technician. That's just the way it is. If you're not spending more than $25 on a pest control te technician, they're not going to do their job. Flat out, plain and simple, they're not doing their job. And that's the truth. So, uh, because you can't afford... You, the thing is, pesticides are really expensive. So let me show you. I'm going to show you my Amazon page. So let me share you with you my Amazon page. So you, you, so you understand what I pay. I, I've bought chemicals on Amazon. In fact, I buy chemicals on Amazon still to this day. And so, so I want to show you the prices. And, and it's similar to what we actually pay when we call our sales reps and stuff. It's similar. It's maybe not as much as this, but almost as much as this. It's not that much off of the price. So let's say you're, you're wanting to deal with cockroaches, okay? So let's do cockroach products. So this is, this is on my Amazon page. This is all the stuff I have on my Amazon page. Okay, here's Vendetta. This is a bait for cockroaches. I highly recommend it. It's a really good bait. $31. All right, you'll get four tubes, but it's $31. So then if you get boric acid dust, that's $83. If you get uh, Delta dust, that's $23. If you get uh, Demon, that's $43. That's used in a, in a, uh, only in an extreme case when, you, when you're doing a clean-out service. Alpine WSG. This is what I actually recommend to eliminate cockroaches. That's $178. That is really expensive. That's a lot of money. You cannot afford, as a pest control technician, you cannot afford to do an adequate roach cleanout for $25. You just can't. You just can't. You can't. So, you cannot get rid of roaches for $25. That's just the way it is. It's just the truth. So, um... You know, I don't recommend trying to get rid of roaches cheap. I recommend getting ro rid of roaches effectively because they are a health hazard. And thank you, Cook. You have a good night. I'll see you another time. Um, so anyway, I, I just want to get that out there and explain that bugs aren't cheap to get rid of, but once you get rid of them, the maintenance is cheap. You know, but the elimination is not. If you practice preventative pest control, even if you do it yourself, you're going to, it's going to be a lot cheaper in the long run. One of the things that happens when roaches get into your apartment or your house, they start to damage things right away. They live in coffee pots, ovens, microwaves. Uh, they live in toaster ovens. They live in computers. Uh, I have people that comment, I have a video on, um, how they live in electronics because people get them in their playstations their xboxes their computers those are very expensive and they damage them and they can cause fires like i was saying earlier and 
uh, that's really expensive. You know, that's not as expensive as eliminating the roaches. You kill the roaches and they're gone, they're gone. And then you save all of your possessions, your personal possessions. And so that's what you're trying to protect when you get roaches in your house, is you're trying to get rid of them so you no longer have them. I, I advise you not go Chinese takeout. Don't do Chinese takeout. Chinese takeout's a real leading cause of getting roaches in your house. It's just the way it is. It's part of, it's just the way it is. I'm, I'm sorry. It's the truth. <laughs> it's just the truth. I've never been in a Chinese restaurant, servicing a Chinese restaurant that I would eat in. Ever. So that's my wife. She's putting wood on the fire. She's a real handy lady to have around. She likes to build a fire. Um, so Ray J says, man, I'm so afraid of these fleas now after living in an infested apartment. Yes, fleas are horrible. Fleas are absolutely horrible. Now, I, uh, now, Decent Woods, I will admit, I've done friends and family free. I, I typically don't charge friends and family. Um, just because I don't. I, I don't usually. I do have a couple of friends of mine that I do charge to do the pest control. But most of my friends and family, I don't charge anything at all. If I'm just going... Now, I did... Last year, I did a job for my uncle. My uncle had uh, termites. And I had to pull the hot tub away from the wall. And I had to drill holes. I gave him a real... Probably half price termite job. Really inexpensive termite job, but I had to get paid something. I was there all day, and and during that time I had calls come in. I had to turn down because I was doing a termite job. You know, I gave him the same service I'd give him to anyone else, and so I had to take the day to get rid of his termites. But most of the time, for friends and family, you know, fifteen twenty minutes here and there, if they're on my route, I can do it. I just do it. I don't charge them. Uh, no, do not buy, buy those plugins for bugs or mice. They don't work. They absolutely don't work. I'm sorry. I got. I get on these tangents because I've seen their their. Uh, I, oh, I, I love these. So let me show you this ad. So, they've got these. Um, oh man. I, I, I'll I'll tell you what. I'll just do a video later on it because I want to. I want to. I want to do it right. And so I'll do it right. You just look forward to it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put up a video on. Uh, you, you'll see. You'll see. It'll be great. It'll be great. I am actually going to get off of here. It's, it's been an hour, over an hour, hour, hour and four, five minutes ticking over now. So I'm going to, uh, can roaches survive winters in an outside car? No, they can't, but the eggs can. Um, what, do, what do you do for bed bugs? So I have a video on bed bugs. I, I'm going to copy and paste this link. That's what I recommend you go watch for bed bugs. This is what I do for bed bugs. Or... You can do uh, this one right here. And this is me actually doing a bed bug job. So if you go watch that, that'll actually show you how to do a bed bug job. Um, can you get roaches from buying things in a box like from Walmart? Yes, you can. Roaches like to eat the glue that holds boxes together. So a lot of times they will get in cardboard boxes. You can bring them home. For Chaos Omen, the question he just asked. So, you guys have a great night. I appreciate it. And I will see you next week, Thursday nights, after the kids go to bed, typically after 9.30 Eastern Time. Y'all have a great night, and I'll see you later. Thanks a lot.